Right guys, it's Ted here, and in this video I'm just going to go around my reptiles and my exotic animals if you will, show you what animals I've got, maybe show you enclosures and stuff like that, just make a video for you to have a nosy around. And before I start, I will also say, this shed wall here behind me, I want this all filling in, filling in with uh, your guys' stickers. So feel free to hit me up and message me and we'll uh, if you want to send me your stickers you can and even do I've got my own stickers there so we can uh, do a little sticker swap or something just let me know if that's something you're interested in or something you want to do but as I say I've got this full wall I want to fill up and now back onto the video before I get sidetracked now where should I start I know where I'll start geckos So these ones here, it's Bingo and Biscuit, two little crested geckos, they were both hatched out I believe on the 1st of uh, September this year, 2020, and these are both the same, do you think? They don't, have, they don't go by morphs, they go by the line on these apparently. And what it is, these come from the red line. I think it's red bio colour, I think they were called. You love to climb around. Beautiful little animals. looking nice and fired up so you can actually see the colours on them this one over here thinks it's Spider-Man got a bit of a water bowl for them food bowl plenty of things to climb up and let them just sit and dangle and plenty of bushes and trees for them to hide in I don't got any substrate in there at the minute, I'm just using paper towel. That's just so I can keep an eye on them for the first few months and me having them. And this vivier, yet. Need to wash. I'm gonna clean it the other day. In this one, I have two little well. Say babies, they're not babies no more. Crested geckos. Which are currently both looking like the in shed. Nice little moisture hide from there that's soaking with cocoa fibre. Little hide over here from the hiding. Another little hide there. A bit of a water ball, not like you need them because drink off the glass when you mist them down. Plenty of food dusted in calcium powder. And the substrate I'm using is Leo Life substrate, and I mix that in with cocoa fibre as well and it gives it this nice sort of texture it's not goes nice and hard and perfect for the uh, leopard geckos but that's them I haven't got a name for them ones yet and this one here is another little leopard gecko This one I actually hatched out myself. I believe its father was a Max Snow gecko. This 
this one actually loves being handled. The cheese. Really starting to get its uh, colours through. It's, uh, I think I said its father was, was uh, Max Snow. And the mother of this one was a Trump Albino. Possible head eclipse, I believe. And the subtrade I've got in here is the same Leo Life mixed with cocoa fibre. But what I've done is I've put, with it being a hatch run, it's only a couple of months couple of months old I've made it extra what do you call it put extra cocoa fiber in so it keeps the moisture in a bit better because these as babies require high humidity so they can shed a lot I did have this on paper towels myself until Yesterday, actually, when I put this in, got a little bit of a water bowl there for it. No food in at the minute, though. Don't like to leave uh, food in with the babies, so that way I know actually what they're eating. And in this bib, if I lift this up, I've actually got three leopard geckos. This one here loves it to be handled as well. This one I got off someone else who I don't believe was actually looking after them very well because the toes are missing and stuff on them. So obviously when you get these geckos, it's very important when you're shedding, you make sure any shed is taken off the feet. Was any stuck shed can make them lose the toes and things like that. And I believe this one here is a uh, Tremper. Uh, Maxor Tremper or something. I think, what, yeah, Maxor Tremper, that's the one. I believe that's what that one is. But these other two, I've got off somewhere else. Can't list, list anyone's names or anything, though. This one over here's got beautiful orangey coloration to it. By the way, that's that one's well met the one I've just showed you. This orangey coloured one is the mother of that attachment that I've just showed you. And that's the uh Trevor Albino possible head eclipse. What well, movie tail, let's put this back down. one's Velma, this one's Cleo, and that one over there is called Daphne. And as you can see it's the same Leo Life Subtrade and uh, Cocoa Fibre. And there's a bowl full of food for them. We see she's not looking chunky or anything. She's looking just the right way, nice and healthy. No stuck shed anywhere, as far as I can see. Make sure there's no stuck shed on her. See if you can notice the difference between this female and the males. See if you can notice that what the difference is between them. That's how you tell right there. See if you see if any you know. This chunky monkey right here. This is the other one I got with Velma. The one that I think's been mistreated because again his toes are missing from not being looked after and not 
being taken care of and getting that loose shed off there. Obviously, a little stump of a tail. Which tells me that it's either been in the fight at some point or it's been scared and the tail's dropped off. Another one who likes to be handled, worked with these quite a bit. And with this one being the uh, male, see if I can see it. There you go, can you see? Can you tell the difference between the male and the females? Let this little guy go back in there now, little chunky monkey. Jump straight off me hand. <laughs> and this one here, I'll call him Shaggy, and he's a other Max Snow Tremper. This guy here, he uh, likes to hide there, or over inside that actual bit of log, and when he's inside there, it's quite hard to get hold of him. I'm not going to pick this one up because obviously. I was all over the mail and not washed my hands, so don't want to be bitten by them. And this one here I call Frosty the Snowman. He's a uh, Max Snow Tramp Albino with possible head eclipse. And these leopard geckos are beautiful, I reckon. Gotta love all their uh, reptiles, well, at least I do anyway. And I use the same sort of mixture for all the leopard geckos as well, for all the adults. I've seen this one here is a little bit harder because I didn't mix as much cocoa fibre in. Because this was the first one I did. Just to see what it would be like, and uh, it's a bit of an experiment. And yeah, the substrate's never gone wrong, it's always been right for me, been perfect. The geckos seem to like it, so yeah, that's my geckos. My uh, hatchling rack, you notice know, there's a few tubs, I'll go through them, show you what's in them. Can you see it already? This little bugger's gonna try and get out. Some male worms, I tried male worms in. It doesn't seem to eat male worms. There she is. These are my little morning geckos. There's a nice little uh, geckos as well, but they're not very, they're more to look at rather than anything else. Because obviously they're that small, they're not very well handled. You might see these little white things running around, they just little springtails that I put in to eat the poo, and they're just overpopulated. Do these bigger tubs first. And this one is. Where's it at first? A ghost mantis. Little psychopaths, you can't keep the males with the females because obviously the males will eat. Uh, the females, shall I say, will eat the males. water bowl in there nice few different bits of leaves for the dangle at different heights and there's the mantis this one here is me female I believe she's at the uh, size of five now I believe You've got to get the size 8 before you can 
breed these. And then if you do breed them, or if I do breed them, I've got to keep an eye on them because these females will rip the heads off the other one and eat them off the males. Now I'll have to show you that last tub. Can you guess what's in this one? I'm sure you can after I'll be showing you that last one. That's the air. Uh, if it lost focus in. That's what they're called, Ghost Mantis. And I'm not even going to pronounce that name there. But that's the uh, Latin name, I believe, of them. Warmed up, and there he is. Come out to say hi, hi already. Nice. And again, just the same. I keep these on paper towels and the, uh, some fake plants, branches, whatever you want to call them, just so they can go down to different heights. And then these two tubs right here are something that I'm not very keen on, but I've got them just to experiment and learn and to try and like them a bit better. Show you what's in these. Again, just a bit of tissue. I did put the, these in and on cocoa fiber and stuff mixed. But uh, you could never see them because obviously these are just little babies. There's yeah, just a little baby tarantula. Can you guess the uh, type of tarantula it is? Comment, pause it right now and comment down below if you can guess what type of tarantula it is. And I'll tell you in five, four, three, two, one. These are uh, called curly-haired tarantulas. That's literally what they call curly-haired tarantula. And this one right here, again, it's just the same. It's a curly-haired tarantula. Little babies. And on that note, I'm afraid I'm going to have to call this video to an end because it's getting quite long. I think it's around 20 minutes long so far, so I'm going to have to end it there and make a part two. So keep your eyes out for a part two. And if you like this video, please feel free to hit that thumbs up button. Give it a like, comment, subscribe, all that other good stuff, whatever you want to do. And uh, follow me on my social media as well, on my Instagram and stuff like that.